that the event horizon, when viewed from the outside, is a place in space where time stops. There is a central problem though, which is still not solved, which is what lies at the center of the black hole. They have been called the monsters of the cosmos, regions so dense, not even light can escape. For decades, we believed black holes were unknowable, their interiors hidden forever behind an invisible wall. But now, the James Webb Space Telescope has done the unthinkable. It's peered closer than ever before, capturing data that may reveal what's truly inside a black hole. What it found challenges everything we thought we knew, and it might just change the future of physics. Anatomy of the Abyss. The moment you hear the word black hole, you might picture a bottomless pit, but the truth is more like a layered monster, each layer stranger than the last. First, there's the event horizon. This is the outer shell of a black hole, like a cosmic point of no return. Nothing, not even light, can escape once it crosses this invisible border. It's not a wall, and you wouldn't even feel it if you pass through. But from the outside, time seems to stop at this edge. As astrophysicist Kip Thorne once said, the event horizon is not a surface in space, it is a place in time. Once you're inside, your fate is sealed. Next comes the accretion disk. This is the swirling storm that forms just outside the event horizon, made of gas and dust being dragged in. These particles heat up to millions of degrees, lighting up the area in bright X-ray radiation. This is actually how we detect black holes. We see this disk shining before matter vanishes. It's like watching a spotlight beam before the bulb is swallowed. Then there's the photon sphere, a region just above the event horizon where gravity is strong enough to trap light in orbit. It's not a place you'd want to be. It's the eye of the storm. Light doesn't escape. It loops endlessly, distorted and spinning. If you were somehow floating there, you'd see the back of your own head, bent around by the warped space. And deepest of all, we come to the singularity, a point where gravity becomes infinite and space-time collapses entirely. We don't know what truly exists there. Is it a true point of infinite density or something else? Some theories suggest it might not be a point at all, but a tightly packed core called a Planck star, built from quantum threads. But here's the kicker. No information can escape from it, so we may never know. Black holes are where God divided by zero. Physicist Stephen Wright. This intricate structure, layer by layer, turns black holes from mysterious objects into detailed, complex phenomena. But to really understand them, we need to trace their roots. Because these giants of gravity didn't just appear, they had a beginning. And their birth stories are as dramatic as their pull. Let's now rewind the clock, billions of years back, to witness how black holes first formed, how stars died, how gas clouds collapsed, and how the universe created monsters from light and matter. Birth of Darkness. Black holes are the tombstones of stars. And like every grave, there's a story behind how it was dug. The most common black holes, stellar mass black holes, form when a star many times more massive than our sun runs out of fuel. Without pressure from fusion to hold it up, gravity takes over. The core collapses. In seconds, all that matter is squeezed down into a single point. This collapse can trigger a supernova, an explosion so bright it outshines an entire galaxy. What's left behind is the black hole, but some black holes didn't form from stars at all. In the early universe, there was no time for stars to live and die. Instead, gigantic clouds of hydrogen gas, hundreds of thousands of times the mass of our sun, collapsed directly under their own gravity. These are called direct collapse black holes, and they might be the seeds that grew into the supermassive ones we see at galactic centers. These seeds fed on streams of gas funneled by the cosmic web, a vast network of matter connecting galaxies like a spider web. These streams carried gas directly into the growing black hole's mouth, helping it balloon in size. In 20, astronomers even observed a black hole surrounded by six galaxies, all embedded in such a cosmic web. It was a feeding frenzy billions of years ago. Another mystery is how some black holes grew so big so fast. Just 900 million years after the Big Bang, we've already found black holes with billions of solar masses. How did they grow that fast? The cosmic web might be the key. It's like watching a baby weighing 200 pounds, one astronomer said. We need to understand how they're growing so quickly. 
Now that we've watched black holes being born from dying stars and collapsing gas, let's look at what happens when they start interacting with the universe around them. Because black holes don't just sit still in space. They pull, they twist, they tear things apart. And every now and then, they get dangerously close to stars and planets. In the next part of our journey, we'll explore the violent dance between black holes and the things that stray too close, sometimes with fatal consequences. Galactic Engulfers Black holes are not hunters, but if something wanders too close, they won't hesitate to devour it. One of the most violent things a black hole can do is shred a star apart. This is called a tidal disruption event. As a star nears a black hole, gravity pulls harder on the side closer to the hole than the far side, stretching the star into a noodle of hot gas. The process is called spaghettification. Half the star's mass might fall in. The rest is flung away in a massive flare. We've actually seen this happen from 665 million light years away. What about planets? Could Earth be swallowed by a black hole? Technically, yes, but the odds are so low, it's not worth losing sleep over. Space is vast, and planets are small. Most black holes are far away, and their gravity doesn't reach across galaxies. But in dense star clusters, where stars are packed tightly, small black holes could roam, possibly capturing planets that pass too close. These would become rogue worlds, trapped in an eternal orbit around an invisible master. We've also seen black holes in binary systems, pairs of stars where one is a black hole. These systems help us study black holes because we can watch their effect on their companion. The first black hole ever discovered, Cygnus X1, is in such a pair. We can't see the black hole directly, but we know it's there. Its gravity pulls matter off its partner star, heating it up and lighting it in X-rays. Finally, there's the question of entire galaxies. Do black holes ever swallow whole galaxies? Not really. They're powerful, but small compared to galaxies. Even the biggest supermassive black holes are only a few percent the mass of their galaxy. Instead of eating their host, they influence it, shaping how stars form and when. During galactic mergers, black holes can also merge, sending ripples across space, gravitational waves we've just started detecting. The black hole teaches us that the universe doesn't play by our rules. Brian Green. We've now seen how black holes can rip apart stars and trap entire planets. But despite their hunger, these objects rarely consume more than they reject. Black holes also spit out matter at incredible speeds, changing their surroundings in surprising ways. And this brings us to a question that has haunted scientists for decades. Do black holes actually consume galaxies? Or is something else happening entirely? In our next chapter, we'll dive into what happens when black holes and galaxies grow side by side, and what they reveal about cosmic balance. Cosmic consumption. It's a dramatic image, an entire galaxy being pulled into a black hole, stars and planets spiraling down like water into a drain. But in reality, it doesn't happen that way. To begin with, the size difference is enormous. A supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy may weigh billions of times more than our sun, but even then, it only accounts for a tiny fraction of the galaxy's mass, less than 0.01%. Most of a galaxy is made of stars, dust, and dark matter spread over hundreds of thousands of light years. Black holes are big, but galaxies are colossal. Instead of consuming galaxies, black holes mostly regulate them. When they feed on gas, they emit enormous amounts of energy. This outflow, often in the form of jets or winds, can stop nearby gas from cooling and forming new stars. It's like a thermostat, keeping galaxies from overheating. This effect, called AGN feedback, actually shapes how galaxies grow. As one scientist said, black holes don't destroy galaxies, they sculpt them. But there's something more dynamic happening too. When galaxies collide, their black holes move toward each other in a gravitational dance. Over millions of years, they spiral inward, eventually merging in a final burst of gravitational waves. These events are rare, but we have already detected several using observatories like LIGO. It shows us that even though galaxies don't get swallowed, their black holes can fuse into even larger ones. Another twist. Not all the matter that falls toward a black hole gets eaten. Some of it gets flung outward. When matter crashes in too quickly, it heats up, 
and forms powerful jets of radiation and particles, some traveling at nearly the speed of light. These jets can stretch for thousands of light years, pushing gas away from the galactic center. So, in many ways, black holes are more like cosmic engines than cosmic vacuums. Galaxies don't fall into black holes. Black holes rise at their centers. Avi Loeb. So, black holes aren't the galaxy eaters we once feared. They shape and guide rather than consume. But that still leaves us with a mystery. What happens inside these gravitational monsters? For the longest time, we believed no one could know. But new technology, new telescopes, and bold simulations are changing that. Let's now journey closer to the edge than ever before, because even if we can't go inside a black hole ourselves, science is beginning to show us glimpses of what lies beyond the veil. Is inside ever seen? Forged for decades, the inside of a black hole was treated like a locked room. The rules said you couldn't open the door. Then in 2010, we got a key. That year, the Event Horizon Telescope EHT gave us the first image of a black hole's shadow. Not the hole itself, but the silhouette it carved into surrounding light. It was in galaxy M87, 55 million light years away. We saw a glowing ring, the heated accretion disk, wrapped around a dark center. It's like photographing a donut in space, said the EHT team. But the real story was in that dark center, a region no light escapes. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWE, WST adds to this story, not by taking a direct photo, but by analyzing the gas and dust falling in. With its infrared eyes, Webb can see through cosmic fog, picking out details we've never seen before. By watching how matter behaves as it approaches the event horizon, we start to reconstruct the space just outside it. Webb's strength is not in direct imaging, but in decoding the signatures of matter as it disappears. We also rely on simulations and theoretical models. Using equations from Einstein's relativity and powerful supercomputers, physicists can recreate what falling into a black hole might look like. These simulations predict warped light, violent turbulence, and gravitational chaos. Some even model the photon ring, a thin halo of light that orbits just above the event horizon multiple times before escaping. Future versions of EHT may even detect this fine ring. Finally, there's something called X-ray reverberation mapping. It measures how X-rays bounce off material near the black hole, creating echoes we can study. These echoes tell us about the shape and size of the inner accretion disk, and hint at how fast the black hole spins. Every echo is a tiny footprint from the edge of the abyss. We have now seen the unseeable. Shep Dolman, EHT director. We've now come closer than ever to understanding what's around a black hole, but the heart of the mystery lies even deeper, at the center of the black hole, where physics breaks down. What happens to matter that crosses the horizon? Is it truly lost forever or transformed? In the next chapter, we'll go beyond the edge, into theories that challenge our understanding of time, space, and information itself. This is where black holes become more than objects. They become puzzles about the nature of reality the singularity and quantum frontier. At the very center of a black hole lies a concept that breaks all the rules, the singularity. Classical physics says it's a point of infinite density, all the mass of the black hole crushed into a single spot with no volume. But infinite isn't just a big number. It's a red flag that says our math doesn't work here. When physicists see infinity in an equation, it means the theory has hit a wall and that wall is the singularity. Some scientists now believe the singularity might not exist. One idea is the Planck star, a theoretical object predicted by loop quantum gravity. In this model, matter collapses only so far before quantum pressure pushes back. The result is not an infinitely small point, but a dense, tiny ball, a Planck-sized remnant. It might even bounce back over time, like a spring compressed to its limit. In this view, the black hole becomes a temporary phase. There's also the famous information paradox. If matter falls into a black hole and never comes out, then where does the information go? According to quantum mechanics, information can't be destroyed, but general relativity says it vanishes in the singularity. This contradiction has sparked fierce debate. Some theories suggest black holes might slowly leak information via Hawking radiation, 
while others propose wild ideas like holographic boundaries or firewalls that burn information at the edge. And then there's evaporation. Over trillions of years, black holes are predicted to lose mass through Hawking radiation and eventually vanish. But what's left behind? Does the singularity simply disappear? Or is something stranger left over, like a frozen core of old quantum data? No one knows for sure, but it shows us that black holes aren't just cosmic objects. They're testing grounds for the deepest laws of nature. The black hole is nature's way of saying, you don't know everything yet. Leonard Susskind. From the singularity to the Planck star, we've touched the edge of what science can explain. But one final mystery remains, the real world consequences. Can black holes actually affect us? Could one drift too close or blast us with debris from across the cosmos? These are no longer just thought experiments. In our final chapter, we look at what happens when black holes wake up and what it could mean for Earth, for life, and for our place in the universe. Real Threat or Cosmic Spectacle In 2018, astronomers watched a star die. It got too close to a black hole and was shredded. That's not unusual. What happened next was, three years after the initial event, the black hole suddenly reactivated. It started spewing out matter at half the speed of light toward Earth. This was a delayed response, a cosmic burp long after the meal. The fact that material can be stored and then ejected years later changes what we thought we knew. Black holes aren't just death traps, they're also unpredictable engines. Could this ejected material hit Earth? Technically, yes, but the odds are slim. These jets are narrow beams, and space is vast. Still, the idea is unsettling. What if there are other black holes out there, active, spinning, storing energy, that could one day erupt in our direction? Then there's the chance of a rogue black hole passing through our solar system. It wouldn't need to touch Earth, just passing close by could disrupt planetary orbits. Thankfully, such events are extremely rare. But in a galaxy with hundreds of millions of black holes, even rare events deserve a second glance. Still, black holes are not just threats. They're also windows into fundamental physics. Every time we observe a tidal disruption event, a merger, or a burst of X-rays from a feeding disk, we're getting closer to understanding how gravity, matter, and time really work. These discoveries don't just warn us, they inspire us. Black holes are the most efficient engines in the universe. Andrew Hamilton, astrophysicist. Black holes are no longer just theories. They're revealing the universe's most profound secrets. Thanks to James Webb, we're closer than ever to answers. If you found this journey into the abyss fascinating, hit like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. The universe is listening, and so are we.